Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nadia and this is This Week in Sex. So This Week in Sex, controversial and widely disliked YouTuber, Jake Paul. Not personally a fan, gonna say. I've watched a few of his videos and I do not understand the allure of them. It's every day, bro, I said it's every day. But regardless, a lot of people are interested in Jake Paul and his personal life and he has caused a bit of controversy this past week by admitting in an interview with the Daily Mail that he only has sex with his girlfriend once a week. I'm sparring two to three times a week against world champions. I'm doing yoga, I'm eating chicken and vegetables and cutting out all the bad stuff. I'm completely sober and I'm only allowed to have sex once a week. Now, this whole limited sex strategy is not new to the Paul family. His brother, Logan Paul, famously prepared for his big fight with KSI in 2019 by saying that he was going without orgasms, basically as ordered by his coach. In an Instagram post, he told fans, my coaches forbid me from having sex before my fight. They said I needed to build my batch. What's my badge? Put simply, pent up ejaculate, my octane, if you will, enough to sink a battleship. Now, this whole idea that withholding from sex and building up your ejaculate is very popular with proponents of the no nut challenge, which has become crazy viral online. Like if you go on YouTube, you can find hundreds, if not thousands of videos of people chronicling their experiences going without sex and masturbation for very long periods. And there is a whole challenge now around it called No Nut November. And personally, I have a real problem with this whole challenge. There is really no actual like peer reviewed medical research to back any of the claims that advocates of this weird challenge make. Apparently storing up your ejaculate is supposed to help you basically build testosterone. But research seems to suggest the opposite, that if you go a long time without ejaculating, your testosterone levels will decrease, not increase. And obviously going without ejaculating for guys is just painful. Blue balls are a very real thing. But apart from that, we also know that ejaculating and orgasms actually have health benefits. There has been a lot of research to show that regular ejaculation can help dramatically reduce the risk for men of developing prostate cancer, which in and of itself is a great reason to wait more often. And we also know from the research around sex that when we go for long periods without masturbating or having sex, our libido declines. So it's going to also have a negative impact on your sex drive if you are going a long time without ejaculating. That's just a fact. It's the way that we build muscles in the gym is we go to the gym regularly and we build those muscles. Yeah, those are guns you guys are noticing. Our workout. <laughs> And if we don't work out, those muscles will disappear. Our libido is exactly the same. We need to keep it strong like a muscle, which is why I very regularly advocate for masturbation on this channel. And I think everyone should do it. And I definitely don't think people should abstain from it. In fact, my thoughts on this whole ridiculous no nut trend and the idea of abstaining from sex to prepare for a boxing match like the Paul brothers have done is that it really is just silly. It doesn't have any real backing behind it. And from what I can gather, it really just seems to be a front for people that are anti-porn and sex phobic. They basically use this to recruit people to be anti-porn and sex phobic as well. Now, while there are problems in the porn industry that need to be dealt with and sex trafficking is a real issue that we should not ignore, to just demonize porn in general and paint all porn as bad and evil is just ridiculous. Porn has great benefits. It has great health benefits. And there are lots of amazing, legitimate sex workers doing great things in the porn industry. So I don't really like to see any more excuses for people to give porn a bad rap. In other news, Utah lawmakers have just rejected a bill that would have made learning about consent a requisite part of sex education in schools. 
introduced earlier this year, HB 177 would have made consent a core part of the sex education curriculum, as well as sexual assault resources and sexual violence behavior prevention strategies. Currently, Utah's sex ed curriculum requires educators to stress the importance of abstinence from all sexual activity before marriage and fidelity after marriage and stress personal skills that encourage individual choice of abstinence and fidelity. So educators in Utah are actually currently prohibited from discussing anything that falls under being the intricacies of intercourse, as in going into detail and explaining what it means, as well as really discussing contraception because they really have this abstinence model. As a sex educator, I have a big problem with any abstinence abstinence models, mainly because we know that they really don't work and they specifically have been proven not to work in Utah. And this is backed up by the research. In Utah, rape is the only violent crime that is actually higher than the national average. One in six women and one in 25 men in Utah will be the victim of a sexual assault or an attempted sexual assault, according to the national figures. In a state where other violent crimes such as homicide, robbery or aggravated assault is historically half to three times lower than the national average, this is of concern. The Utah Department of Health writes on its website. I think there is a real problem anytime we try to impose religion on education and around the way we are teaching kids. We know that the abstinence-based model of sex education is most prevalent in highly conservative Christian areas and while I definitely believe in religious freedom and everyone having the right to worship who they want and believe what they want and live the kind of life they want provided they're not hurting anyone. I have a real problem with teaching kids that the best way to stay protected is to simply not have sex because it's just not reflective of the realities of the world we live in. We know from the research that regardless of what we teach kids, kids are having sex at younger ages than ever and in particular we are seeing sky rocketing rates of teen pregnancy and teen STDs because we aren't teaching kids about these things. We're really sending them out into the world ill-equipped. So it would be good in theory if we could just say, let's just not talk about sex and kids won't have sex. I personally don't believe that kids should be having sex. I believe that sex is something you should do once you are fully emotionally and mentally mature to be able to make that decision. But the reality is that kids are having sex and we need to give them the resources and the tools to be protected while they're having sex. And consent is such an incredibly important part of that. It needs to be a part of all sex education. Even sex education that says sex should only be happening inside marriage because consent is still important in marriage. You still need to have consent regardless of whether you're in a relationship or not. And it's really only been in recent years that we've actually even changed our laws to reflect that. And there are still places in the world that rape is not considered rape if it occurs within a marriage because we don't talk about consent when it happens in a relationship. And so this stuff is really important, but that's my thoughts. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Would you like to see discussion of consent be a requisite part of sex education? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. In other legal sex news, California is set to potentially become the very first state to make stealthing illegal. Now, if you haven't heard of stealthing, Honestly, good for you because it is truly a disgusting term and it's really disgusting that we needed to actually come up with a term for this, but it is a gross new sex trend. And I use the word trend very lightly here because it truly is a violation and a form of sexual assault. Basically, stealthing is when someone agrees to having sex with a condom and then when they are not looking, usually often when they're in doggy style position, so they're facing the other way, the person wearing the condom removes moves the condom so that they can have raw sex with them without their consent because raw sex 
feels better. Needless to worry about the fact that they're obviously putting their partner at risk for things like STIs, pregnancy, and that they have completely violated that person's boundaries. So if passed, this new law would essentially view victims of stealthing as victims of sexual battery, and the perpetrator of the stealthing could actually be up for jail time. Democratic Assembly member Christina Garcia introduced this bill last week, and she said of the bill, I've been working on the issue of stealthing since 2017, and I won't stop until there's some accountability for those who perpetrate the act. It's disgusting that there are online communities that defend and encourage stealthing and give advice on how to get away with removing the condom without the consent of their partner. But there is nothing in law that makes it clear that this is a crime. She went on to say that having something in the books allows us to do the education to hopefully create a consciousness that we shouldn't do certain things. I for one am absolutely all for this law and I would love to see this just become completely widespread and see all states adopting it because consent is just so critical to sex and we really need to start recognizing that when you breach someone's consent you are committing a form of sexual assault and then finally in hilarious sex news over in the uk in tavistock a couple were caught having sex in sub-zero conditions they were in the car going for it like crazy when it was minus seven and a half degrees Fahrenheit because they wanted to get some nookie during lockdown. Unfortunately, they were caught by police who were doing checks to make sure that everyone was abiding by the rules. And the police did determine that although they really wanted to be having sex, sex was not counted as essential travel for being out in the car. I know a lot of people are really struggling with the loneliness and just the inability to access sexual contact with people during these lockdowns. And so these these sorts of offenses have been very common. We have seen them a lot, not just in the UK, but happening all around the world. And it does go to show that sex really is just such a fundamental human need and just physical contact and touch as well. So please people, play by the rules. If you cannot get to your partner, invest in a good vibrator. There are some amazing vibrators out there that you can use with your partner virtually. Your partner can be in their home completely away from you and they can control this toy all on their phone and you can experience all of the vibrations and you can have phone sex and you can have video sex. There are things that we can do now to stay safe and still be sexy. <laughs> All right, those are my thoughts, but if you have a different thought, share it in the comment section down below. Obviously, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well because This Week in Sex is coming to you every Monday and you do not want to miss the latest news in sex. And when you hit that notification bell, it means YouTube will let you know as soon as these videos go live so you can be the first to be updated on the sexiest kind of news on the internet. And I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah.